Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gershwan, and today we're going to be talking about the Diamondbacks chapter. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K lore videos every single day. If you have any suggestions, please comment down below. And if you enjoy our content, thank our patrons on Patreon. It is because of them that we can do this. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. But with that said, let's get into 40 facts on the homebrew chapter of the Diamondbacks. Amongst the successors of the Stoic Imperial Fist is a Space Marine chapter that has earned a reputation for how incredibly adept its battle brothers are in the field of marksmanship. This loyalist chapter is known as the Diamondbacks. So unusually accurate are these Space Marines that it has led many within the Inquisition to grow suspicious at the chapter's skills with range weaponry. The Diamondbacks' origins are shrouded in mystery, and very few if any Imperial records exist on the chapter's founding. All that is known is that the Diamondbacks were created sometime during the 36th millennium, using the gene seed of the Primarch Rogaldorn. Subsequent analysis of the Diamondbacks' gene seed by the Adeptus Mechanicus was able to pinpoint various mutations not seen on other sons of Dorn. Although only cosmetic, the Battle Brothers of the Diamondbacks developed an unusual physical mutation that gives them a forked tongue, red, viper-like eyes, and sharpened fangs that produce a highly toxic venom but again, these are merely cosmetic flaws, and no record exists of the chapter utilizing these traits for any tactical purpose. Further inquisitorial investigation of the chapter's gene seed led to a theory that the Diamondback's notorious marksmanship is due to a mutation that caused the eyes and nervous system to synchronize, creating superior sharpshooters even compared to the superhuman levels of other Astartes. If the Inquisition is correct, it would also explain the chapter's red viper-like eyes that, unlike the salamanders, do not glow with luminescence. Imperial savants speculate that the cause of these unusual mutations are tied to the chapter's homeworld of Tejas, more specifically a rare fruit that once grew in their desert death world and became a staple of the Diamondbacks' diet. The fruit was harvested from a bush out in the desert wastelands and then consumed before training as it heightened the Battle Brothers' senses. Ever since the chapter began this tradition, the mutations only grew more prominent, until eventually the fruit went extinct. Some imperial savants even go as far as concluding that the fruit had awoken an already existing yet hidden mutation, even stating that the chapter may have been created during the 21st founding, also known as the Curse Founding. This, however, cannot be proven without further investigation of the chapter's homeworld, a task that the Diamondbacks would probably not sanction. Their homeworld, Tejas, is located in the westernmost reaches of the Segmentum Obscurus, orbiting their planet are two moons, Austona and Alamos, which each have become a garrison outpost for the chapter. The planet itself has a population that consists of renegade outlaws and cutthroat bandits, usually starting their criminal campaigns at an early age. These young boys are perfect candidates for recruitment by the Diamondbacks chaplains, who are known within the chapter as Preacher Men. It is Diamondback tradition to have aspirants hunt down a native giant horn predator known as a large horn in the desert wastelands and ravines of Tejas. The aspirants can only use a signature power whip known as a viper tongue and a knife. Should the aspirants return to the fortress monastery of Dalasar, located within the deepest ravine on the planet, a deep gorge known as the Jaws of Death, with the head and pelt of the creature, they are then accepted as Brother Astartes. Once inducted into the chapter's ranks, the Battle Brothers will don the Diamondback signature black power armor with lime green faceplates, shoulder cauldrons, and knee guards. They will proudly wear the Diamondback's chapter icon of a lime green coiled serpent ready to pounce, centered on a black colored spade. As was said before, the chapter's history, including its battle honors, are incomplete due to inquisitorial tampering. However, it is known that the chapter has clashed with the Inquisition some time after its founding, which could explain the censure. The only reliable Imperial battle record that exists is a fleet-based battle recorded in great detail. The Diamondback's flagship, known as the Come and Take It, and a gladius ship named Don't Tread On Me, came into conflict with the fleet of world eaters, though the exact location was unfortunately classified by the Inquisition. What occurred is not certain, and all that is known is that the Diamondbacks somehow survived the battle with little damage to their ships. What is also known is that their ammunition was hardly depleted at all. 
Yet all the World Eater ships were destroyed, showcasing the Diamondbacks' notorious marksmanship. This, of course, made the Inquisition skeptical and suspicious of such skills, though they have never found any taint of chaos within the chapter. Currently, the Diamondbacks are led by the Dauntless Chapter Master, Cash Wayne, who has held the position since the start of the 39th millennium. Cash Wayne has established a military doctrine known as Blitz Fighting hitting their enemies from afar, but still being able to hold a siege, as many of the Imperial Fist chapters do. Unlike the traditional ten companies of most chapters, Cash Wayne has held on to the Diamondbacks' unique organization of five companies, with a specialized biker company named the Rough Riders, and a company that utilizes power sabers. The chapter has also accepted the Primaris Marines, even going as far as giving the Reavers their own company, known as the Mamba Squad. Under Wayne's command is Preacher Man Willie Gaboon, a chaplain with such a glare as to strike fear into any Xenos he comes across. Heading the Librarius is Chief Librarian, Dances with Adders, a powerful psyker who is rumored to be able to call upon the Emperor to guide them in battle and in training. One of the chapter's most accurate shots is First Captain Alejandro de la Cruz. His primary weapon is a bolter pistol, which he simply calls Lucky. His skills with Lucky are legendary, even amongst his brethren. He has been said in one account by the Diamondback scouts that Alejandro stood against a massive swarm of High Fleet Kraken with a few of his lessers and cut them down with only one bolt around per tier in it. This deadly accuracy has earned Alejandro the title of Death Dealer by his fellow Diamondbacks. Like most Space Marine chapters, the Diamondbacks hold the Emperor of Mankind in the highest regard, calling him the Big Man. They also hold a unique tradition called the Duel of Hot Irons, where the two battle brothers will walk 50 paces from each other and fire non-lethal shots at one another. Whoever lands the first shot is the winner. As expected, the Diamondbacks hold a resentment towards the Death Watch, the chamber militant of the Ordo Xenos of the Inquisition. The chapter claims it's mainly due to the fact that one of the Death Watch members once said to Diamondback Sergeant Jesse Houston, the chapter will be forgotten. The reason why is unknown, though it is noted that the Death Watch member in question was from the Silver Skulls chapter, who have a rivalry with the Diamondbacks. When Jesse took his insult to the current Death Watch leader at the time and place, the said leader simply shrugged it off. The Diamondbacks' mistrust of many military forces under the Inquisition has drawn the acceptance of the Space Wolves chapter, who have an even worse relationship with the Inquisition. They can also rely on the Salamanders chapter and any other Imperial Fist successor chapter, such as the Black Templars, Crimson Fist, or the Last Wall chapter. They even formed a bond with a chapter of ill repute as the Black Dragons, who see their mutation as nothing more than a tool and not applied. It is not uncommon for these Astarte chapters to ask to borrow some of the Diamondbacks' ammunitions. Despite conflict with the Inquisition, the Diamondbacks have continuously stood steadfast against the forces of chaos, standing eternal vigil against signs of threats to their home system and any imperial world in the surrounding area. And those were 40 facts on the Diamondbacks homebrew chapter. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, thank our patrons on Patreon. It's because of them that we can make these videos. Link in the description if you guys want to support us. It's just a dollar a month. And special thanks to the creator of this chapter, Crazy Snake 88. He contacted us on Facebook. He sent us a link to the Homebrew Wiki page where he um, organized all the lore for his Homebrew chapter, uh, and we were able to pick off all the cool stuff and create this video for him. Uh, if you guys want to share your own Space Marine chapter lore with us and you want us to create a video, uh, just hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or email us at onemindsyndicate1 at gmail.com. If you already did, chances are we're going to get in contact with you pretty soon. There's a couple of you guys that I've seen. Uh, you guys emailed us uh, some information. Uh, if you are thinking about organizing your Space Marine lore, uh, definitely check out the Homebrew um, Wiki fandom page because they do a really good job of giving you a template as to what is important 
about a Space Marine chapter and it helps us create the video or it helps us organize the video a whole lot better if you use that template. Uh, so click on the link down in the description below to check out the Diamondbacks um, actual lore and also just, you know, if you are interested, uh, check it out just to see if you can use that as a tool to create uh, your own lore. Now there's a lot of things that Crazy Snake 88 did really well for the chapter and we're going to talk about that right now because I feel like uh, what he did can really help you create your own Space Marine chapter. He did something uh, very unique and something that um, really needs to be done with every single uh, Space Marine uh, fan or homebrew chapter, and that is thinking about their predecessor in terms of uh, the gene seed. So, uh, Every single Space Marine chapter that is going to be created has to come from a first founding legion. Whether that first founding legion is traitor, loyalist, or one of the lost uh, legions, there is a preset uh, to what they what they will be. In his situations, he used the Imperial Fist, but he wasn't constrained by the boundaries of the Imperial Fist. As we all know, Imperial Fists are known for being stoic and being um, being able to hold a siege. They are awesome siege builders, um, but he wasn't necessarily... Um, put into a boundary because of that, because of the ability of using the gene seed flaw. Uh, a gene seed flaw is something really important uh, whenever you're creating your own homebrew chapter. What you want to do is create a flaw that is going to basically write the story for you in the future. It doesn't necessarily have to be something bad. So whenever you think of a genetic flaw, sometimes you think of like the Wolfen or the Red Thirst, which is a huge uh, story driven arc that does influence the Space Wolves, the Blood Angels, and any of their successor chapters, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing. In his situation, his genetic flaw uh, basically combined the eye and the nervous system giving him uh, more than than superhuman levels of shooting. Uh, so you can take a genetic flaw that would normally be something negative or just something um, out of the ordinary, but then turn it into something good. And the Diamondbacks do a really good job of doing that. And on top of that, you threw in some cool um, aesthetic uh, features that are caused by the genetic flaw. Um, with the whole, uh, the, the tongue, the eyes, and the teeth, uh, connecting it again to the whole uh, snake aesthetic of the chapter, which I really loved. And it's an opportunity for you when you're creating your Space Marines, uh, if you want to take that extra step and actually maybe even uh, kit bash some of those features into the specific Space Marines. So good job on using the genetic gene seed to basically write your story. With that, you were able to talk about the sharpshooting. With that, you were able to talk about the conflicts with the Inquisition, because of course the Inquisition wants Space Marines to be pure, and then at the same time they want control of exactly what's going on, and most Space Marine chapters are autonomous. So the fact that um, you have an outside source coming in and asking questions because of the genetic flaw is just an awesome opportunity for you to write stories with, which is what you did. Now, uh, he did ask us to ask you guys to comment down in the comment section below, uh, help him out with some cool characters or backstories that you guys could write um, for his chapter. Now, another really good thing that he did is that he created a real world um, aesthetic into his Space Marine chapter. What I mean is like, he, you can tell that it's a theme of Texas and America. Like there are key uh, names for your characters that you created, and there are key features specifically for the home world of Tejas, which is Texas, um, that really drove the story of your home world. And that's what you should do too. If you want to somehow pay homage to an area that you're from, um, creating a homeworld based specifically on uh, features or cultural things that are around you uh, is an excellent way to create a Space Marine chapter. Uh, he created a the the whole initi the neophyte initiation ritual of killing a, a he called it a large horn, but really it's just a long horn. Uh, so again, having those. Texas themes within the chapter really showcased how you can have fun 
and how you can really uh, pay homage to certain cool things around you. Now, as far as you asking for backstories or uh, character ideas, I think you're already set. You created some really good characters. All you need to do is take the small bits of information that you gave us on those characters and create battles to create the backstory. You kind of already did that with your first captain, Alejandro. All you have to do is um, do that with every single one of your... I think you only have four characters, uh, so it's not that difficult. Um, specifically, what I was thinking when I was reading the lore is that there is uh, your chaplain, um, the Willy. Uh, his whole thing is that he is so scary that he even frightens Xenos. That's an excellent opportunity. Since you already talked about um, your the, the Diamondbacks fighting Tyranids with your first captain, how he held off a bunch of Tyranids, what you should do is you should showcase or you should create a story where it showcases how, how frightening Willy is to the point where he actually scared Old One-Eye, a Tyranid, uh, something that's so animalistic uh, that it struck fear or that he was... He was scared by Willie. Uh, creating a story like that um, really showcases the point that you're trying to drive with each individual character. Same thing with the overall theme of your uh, Diamondbacks chapter. The whole point is that they are awesome shooters. The 40k universe is filled with really good shooters. Uh, so actually creating a campaign in which maybe the Diamondbacks fought against the technologically advanced and range uh, capable uh, Tau Empire and actually outshot the Tau Fire Warriors or outshot the um, Tau Navy. Uh, that would be an excellent uh, campaign for you to create for this chapter. Uh, another thing that comes to mind is that the Necrons, they actually possess this giant, um, it's called a world engine and it's basically a Death Star. Uh, so whenever I think of sharpshooters, I think of the story of Star Wars and how Luke was able to fire uh, that one shot into the Death Star that basically detonated the whole thing. So creating a campaign or a battle that showcases that and maybe one of your um, captains is able to do the same thing that Luke did in, the, in Star Wars and destroy a world engine, um, it just adds like flavor to the uh, entire chapter. Another thing you did really well is introduce humor into the chapter. Um, if you go over to the wiki page, uh, you're going to see that he created some uh, quotes for his characters. Um, I didn't include those in the videos because I want you guys to go over to the, the wiki page and just check it out for yourself. Um, but there, there are some quotes that, that are really funny. Like one of them, one of them is by uh, Chapter Master Cash Wayne, and he says, Let me tell you what the preacher man says. When you mess with Papa Dorn's sons, you best darn believe that Papa Dorn's sons will mess with you. That that's kind of reminiscent of the the way GW creates quotes for the orcs. Uh, like it it's it's not cheesy. It's it's just you having fun with the lore and having fun with the with the fact that you are um, creating a chapter based on the things you like in real life or the things that are interesting interesting to you in real life. So that humorous aspect is something that uh, is also very rare and that you'd pulled off really well. Uh, so I again I would say including small little uh, characters that are over the top characters. Uh, it is a good way to to fluff out your Space Marine chapter lore. And another bit I wanted to talk about is that you created some really good chapter relics. You have the Chalice of Dorne, the Tooth of Dorne, the Fang of the Serpent. If you listening want to know uh, exactly what those are, just jump on over to the wiki page. That's the reason I didn't include those in the in the um, the video. Um, but you did a really good job of giving us a teaser as to what those are. Now what I want to know is the backstory on how the chapter even got those. So you have that opportunity as well. You did a good job with your chapter relics. Just flesh them out a little bit more the color scheme is amazing uh, the fact that it's black and green it's simple it's nice uh, but then at the same time because of the color green that you chose it really makes them pop um, as you guys probably will see in the the video right now uh, he's already painting some of them up and and they look really awesome uh, so keep up the great work with your painting with your stories and then for all of you listeners what i need you guys to do is comment down in the comment section below and just give them some cool ideas as to backstories or pointers for the entire chapter as a whole and then uh, 
tune in because he might be updating the actual stories with more uh, or the, updating the actual wiki page which with more stories based on your recommendations uh, I can't wait to talk to you guys in the comment section um, and again if you have a fan uh, chapter that you guys would like us to talk about email us hit us up on uh, social media uh, but more importantly uh, share this with your friends that way they know that we're starting to do this uh, and if they want to showcase their own Space Marine chapter, all they have to do is, uh, is let us know. Uh, thanks so much for listening, guys, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Gershwan with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>